boys and girls, hope everyone's keeping well and today we have another message for you and today we have the story of Ruth and Naomi and we'll be in the book of Ruth and um, we'll be looking at redemption. So first of all we'll just close our eyes and we'll just have a short prayer. Thank you. Dear Lord God and Father in heaven, I just pray Lord that um, you would be with us today, Lord, as we give this message to the children. And I pray, Lord, that you be with each child and young person as they listen in. And I pray, Lord, you write the word of God on their hearts. And I pray that the word will speak to them, Lord, and, and teach them more about, about the Lord and about redemption. And I just pray, Lord, for each child, that each child would be truly converted to Christ. And for any who are already saved, Lord, I I pray that you would build them up in their most holy faith. Now, Lord, be with us, Lord. Pour out your spirits upon us, Lord. And myself and each one listening in, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everybody. So, first of all, I just want to mention about um, sometimes we hear of Christians in other lands and they, they lose their whole families when they come to Christ. They may be in a, a land where um, the people are all of the Muslim faith or Hindu faith or some other faith that um, they do not believe in Christianity. And often, you know, the, when they be, decide to follow Christ and um, when they get saved, they often the families, they just turn against them and, and won't have anything to do with them. And it, it's very, very sad for them. And some families even threaten to kill them if they don't stop following Christ and they have to flee for their lives and it's very sad and so they, they lose all their families and that goes on a lot in, in the world today but today we will be looking at a young woman who gave up all her family and went to live in Israel and um, she became a believer in the Lord God of Israel and um, she was a lovely young woman and we're going to learn about her today her name, her name was Ruth. But first of all, though, we will have a look at um, Naomi, uh, Ruth's mother-in-law. Now, Naomi, she was married to a man called Elimelech. And Naomi and Elimelech, they had two sons, Marlon and Chilion. And they lived in Bethlehem in, in Judah. And now there was a famine in, in Bethlehem. And food was very, very scarce. And Elimelech decided to take his family to the country of Moab. And they went along there and, and they lived there for a while. And uh, they really should have stayed in Bethlehem and trusted in the Lord to provide for them. But they didn't. They, they took off and they went. And Moab was a pagan country. And um, Elimelech, he, he died there. And um, Naomi was left with her two sons. And they both, they took wives of the Moabites, and um, one was Orpah, and the other was Ruth, who we're going to learn about today. And they lived there for about 10 years. And then Marlon and Chilean, sons, they died as well. And Naomi was left without her husband or sons, but she still had the two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. And um, she heard then that the famine in Bethlehem was over. And so she decided that she would return to her land. And she heard, and this is in Ruth 1, 6. I'm going to read this to you. Um, then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. And that, that's a lov lovely scripture. The Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. And so she decided to return to Bethlehem. And so she left the place where she had been living with the two daughters-in-law, Orpah and Ruth. And they went on their way to return to Judah. And after a while, Naomi told the girls, she said to them that they should return to their families. And she wished them God's blessing and she kissed them and, and they both wept. And they had come to love. Naomi you know and at first they said they would continue on with her to her people 
But Naomi continued to tell them to return to their families. And finally, Orpah, she kissed her mother-in-law goodbye and he went on her way. She went back to her people. But Ruth, she clung to Naomi. She refused to go. And Naomi said Orpah had gone back to her people and her gods. But Ruth, she wouldn't go. And here I'm going to read this to you as well in, in Ruth 1, 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. And so you see, as she made that statement, she was actually confessing faith in the Lord God of Israel. She said, Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. And she was saying that she would follow the Lord God, the God of Israel. So Naomi, she realised Ruth was not going to change her mind. And so the two of them, they they went on their way. They continued their journey to Bethlehem. And, the, and they arrived in Bethlehem. And Naomi said for the people to call him Mora, for God had dealt bitterly with her. And she said she went out full, but the Lord had brought her back empty. She'd lost her husband and his sons. She went out with them, but she came back without them. And it was the beginning of the barley harvest um, when they arrived. And um, Ruth said she would go to the field um, to glean ears of corn. Um, in Bethlehem, when the men were getting the harvest in, they would always leave some behind for the poor people to come and pick up and take. And it was called gleaning. And this is what Ruth did. She followed the reapers and took what they left. And it turned out that the field she was gleaning in belonged to Boaz, who was a kinsman of Naomi's husband. So that's a relative of Naomi's husband. And, and he was a good man. And, and he asked who Ruth was. And the reapers told him she was the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi. And Ruth asked him, could she glean in his fields? And he said, yes. Uh, and he was very, very kind to Ruth. He looked after her and he made sure she got plenty of food for her and Naomi. And, and he protected her too. And he said he knew how good she had been to Naomi since the death of her husband. And how she had left her father and her mother and the land of her birth and come to a people that she did not know. And he said she would be rewarded by the Lord God of Israel. I'm going to read this one to you as well in Ruth 2, 12. The Lord recompense thy work and the full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. This is the one part I want you to remember. Under whose wings thou art come to trust. And what he was saying was that she'd come to trust under the wings of the Lord God of Israel. That's a beautiful picture of, of the Lord. When you when you imagine like a little mother hen and she's got her wings out and all, all the little chicks underneath her wings and protects them and she she shelters them from outside. They all hide under her wings. And that is a picture of what God does for us. He, he protects us and he shelters us and it's it's really it's a really lovely picture of the Lord. And anyway, he invited her to eat at his table and Ruth went home with plenty of food for them both. And she told Naomi all about Boaz and how kind he was to her. And she continued to glean in his field and um, she dwells with her mother-in-law, Naomi. So she stayed living with Naomi and she went gleaning each day and she gleaned until the end of the barley harvest and then Naomi told her that Boaz being a kinsman would look after her and it was a custom in Israel that if a man died the man's brother or relative marry the widow so, so Ruth was told by Naomi to wash herself and dress nicely and go to the threshing floor where Boaz would be and when he lay down to sleep, 
she was to uncover his feet and lay down by him. And she said, when Boaz woke, he would tell her what to do. So, so Ruth did as Naomi had said. Uh, and when he had eaten and drunk, he lay down and she went softly and uncovered his feet and she lay down. And she was very quiet. And at midnight, he woke up and he realised she was there. And he asked who it was and she said, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. And she asked him to spread his skirt over her because he was a near kinsman. He was asking for protection. He blessed her and he told her not to fear. He said he would do what she wanted. For all the sissy knew that she was a virtuous woman and he said he would perform the part of the kinsman. But there was someone who was a nearer kinsman than him and he would have to talk to him first. So she lay down at his feet until the morning and then she rose up and he gave her six measures of barley in her veil for her to take home. And she went back into the city and she told Naomi all, all that had happened. Now Naomi said, it's still my daughter until thou know how the matter would fall. So he and Naomi was telling her to just sit still, be quiet, don't do anything else now. You've done what, what had to be done. Now it's up to Boaz to see how things work out. So Boaz, he went to the gate of the city. That's where they used to do, have all the different meetings of the men and the elders and everyone and the judges. And they had a lot of business went on there. So he went to the gate of the city and the man who was near a kinsman then him, he came by. And Boaz spoke to him about Ruth and Naomi and how Naomi was selling a parcel of land which was Elimelech's husband. And he told the man that if he would redeem it, that that is buy it, that he could. But if he didn't, then he would. So he gave this man the first option to buy it. And Boaz said, if he bought it off Naomi, then he must also buy it off Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So the kinsman said, I could not do this. And the custom was to confirm this, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbour. And this was a testimony in Israel. And the kinsman told Boaz to buy it. And so he drew off his shoe and Boaz said to the elders and to the people, he said, ye are my witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chalians and Marlins and at, at the hand of Naomi. So he, he bought it all and he said that Ruth, the wife of Marlin, he had purchased to be his wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So here he was saying that he would marry Ruth and that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. So he wanted to marry Ruth so that Ruth could have a child and that child would continue the name of her husband. And all the people said, they all said together, we are witnesses. And the people blessed him and Ruth. So Boaz, he took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception uh, and she had a son. And the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, because he had not left here without a kinsman. And they praised Ruth. They all really liked Ruth. And Naomi took the child and laid it close to her, and she became nurse to it. So she looked after us and she nursed us. And the women, the women were saying, there is a son born to Naomi. So she was really being blessed now. And they called his name Obed. And he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. That's King David we're talking about there. And this baby, Obed, was the grandfather of King David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, and his descendant was the Lord Jesus Christ. So Boaz, he is a type of Christ. When Ruth lay at his feet, it is a lovely picture of us coming to the Lord. He was helpless. She needed protection. Uh, she was poor and humble 
and he was a rich man. She came to him and she just lay at his feet. And when we come to Christ, we are poor and needy. And Boaz spread his scarce over Ruth, which was a sign that he would take care of her. And so too the Lord spreads his scarce over us, poor needy sinners, when we come to him by faith and trust in his work on Calvary's cross to redeem us. And we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, which he shed on Calvary's cross. Boaz redeemed Ruth with money, but Christ redeemed us by his blood, by the shedding of his blood. There's a lovely little chorus in a hymn, which I just want to read to you. Redeemed how I love to proclaim this, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Once you are saved, you are redeemed, you are bought, bought with a price. The price was the precious blood of Jesus. And once you are truly saved, you will be the Lord's child forever. So I, I hope any of you who have never put their trust in the Lord Jesus, I, I just hope that you will truly consider it today. Come to Christ. Bring your sins to him. Bring all your worries and cares to him. And just tell him it's all and, and confess your sins to the Lord. And trust in him. Trust in that sacrifice on Calvary's cross. Okay, so that's our message for today. And now we're going to have some questions. And I will say the question and I'll give you a, a few moments to answer it. So why did Elimelech take his family to the country of Moab? Why did they leave Bethlehem? Because there was a famine. What happened to Elimelech in Moab? He died. What did his boys do? They got married. Who did they marry? Ruth and Orpah. What happened to the boys? They died too. Who was left? Naomi, Ruth and Orpah. Why did Naomi decide to return to Israel? She heard the famine was over. Did the girls start out with her to go back? Yes, they did. What happened? Naomi told them to go back to their people and to their gods. Did they go? Orpah went. Ruth refused to go. She stayed with Naomi. In Israel, what did Ruth do? When she got back to Bethlehem, what did she do? She gleaned in the fields for food. Who did she meet? She met Boaz. What, was he a kinsman? Yes, he was. Did he marry her? Yes, he did. Did they have a child? Yes, they did. What was his name? Obed. Who was he the grandfather of? King David. Who was his descendant? The Lord Jesus. Okay, so that's our questions for today. So now we're just going to have a short prayer just to close off and I'd ask you once again to close your eyes and bow your heads and just fill your hearts before God. Thank you. Dear Lord God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this message today, Lord, about Ruth and Orpah and Naomi. And Lord, we thank you for how you dealt with Ruth's heart, Lord, that she came to trust in the Lord God of Israel. And thank you, Lord, that 
and Boaz is, was her kinsman and that he did marry her and they had a child, Obed, and that child was was the grandfather of King David. We thank you for all this, Lord, the history of the Jewish people. And Lord, we thank you for redeeming us, Lord, as, as Ruth was redeemed, Lord, um, by, by money. We thank you that we are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And Lord, we just thank you for that sacrifice on Calvary's cross. Thank you, Lord, for all that you did for us. We confess our sins to you, Lord, and we ask you to forgive us of our sins. And Lord, we ask that if there's any listening in, Lord, who have never come to Christ, we pray, Lord, that you would touch their hearts, Lord, that they will come to an understanding of the things of God and of their need to get right with God. So, Lord, do bless all those listening in, Lord, all the children, Lord, the younger ones, the older ones. Bless each one, Lord, and be with each one this week, Lord, in school and homeschooled, Lord, whichever it be, and, and bless them, Lord, with their friends and families, and I pray for all their loved ones, Lord, that all their loved ones, that they would be truly safe, Lord, and, and that all of our, our children, Lord, who listen in each week, Lord, that they would go on with God. So, Lord, bless us, we pray, and thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, everyone. So that's all for today. So I hope you all have a really good week. And um, Lord willing, we'll see you again um, very soon, and we'll have another message for you. So have a good week, everyone, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye. God bless. Mm -hmm.